we know from certain studies that uh, metals, especially steel, uh, can have a viable virus for up to three days. So you've right. got to make sure the horizontal surfaces are cleaned um, and wrap the hand washing, you know, make sure you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. You know, um, a lot of people have different uh, ways to remind themselves it's 15, 20 seconds at least with water and, uh, and, and, uh, and soap. I, I have this song, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive and li literally staying alive. <laughs> So, wow. <laughs> uh, you know, people, people got to like, you know, uh, really heed to these uh, uh, guidance by CDC and WHO and mm -hmm. just uh, hunker down at home and uh, avoid uh, contact. So I would encourage uh, patients to eat, um, you know, uh, enough vegetables and plants and a well uh, balanced diet so they're they're not nutritionally compromised that can certainly affect the immune system. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would like to uh, mention is stress. Now there are some studies uh, not done in COVID-19 uh, context, but we know that stress is nobody's friend. Right. Stress can affect the immune system. Stress has been known uh, to affect wound healing. So it clearly has impact on uh, your immune systems and your body's regeneration. Now, there are some studies uh, not done in COVID-19 uh, context, but we know that stress is nobody's friend. Right. Stress can affect immune system. Stress has been known uh, to affect wound healing. So it clearly has impact on uh, your immune systems and your body's regeneration capabilities. So, yeah. so to that point about stress, uh, we had a question. What about if, if someone has carcinoid syndrome, uh, are they at risk of going into carcinoid crisis because of this extra stress? Theoretically, yes. Certain functional neuroendocrine uh, tumor patients, um, you know, can get triggered or their syndrome can get triggered with stress. It's a well-known right. documented sure. fact. And the stress is very personal, you know, and uh, yes, certainly we have seen in media patients with not even history of cancer. They have, it, it has taken a lot of toll on a lot of pay, uh, people, you know, we hear about uh, these sad stories in the media, uh, how stress is building up. It's not just from, uh, you know, um, the COVID-19 and situation around us, but sometimes being at home without mm -hmm. our friends and without socializing, which we're yeah. so used to, can add to stress. And then on top of that, for our cancer patients, you know, having the cancer diagnosis and to, uh, you know, they're already under so much stress because of the medications and the rigor of the treatments, etc. So stress can certainly... Uh, be a huge factor, and uh, my my recommendation uh, would be uh, to everybody listening here, especially cancer patients, please try to avoid stress. It's not going to help. It's only sure. going to hurt. And certainly, in in the certain nuance for nets, like you mentioned, it can certainly theoretically cause a carcinoid carcid. Uh, any stress can. So, uh, you know, people, people got to like, you know, uh, really heed to these uh, uh, guidance by CDC and WHO and mm -hmm. just uh, hunker down at home and uh, avoid uh, contact. So uh, besides these, uh, specifically for our cancer patients, uh, I would uh, like to give some additional piece of advice. And again, they might not be very rooted in evidence. However, uh, I think these advice are, uh, uh, you know, probably are low potential to harm. One of the things I would recommend is eat healthy, nutritious yes. diet, right? Um, food is medicine and our immune system, uh, health of our immune system is dependent on our diet, right? So I would encourage uh, patients to eat, um, you know, uh, enough vegetables and plants and a well uh, balanced diet so they're 
they're not nutritionally compromised that can certainly affect the immune system. One of the things I kind of found during my research uh, for this uh, interview is, uh, you know, importance of sleep and sleep hygiene. Mm. There have been a couple of really neat studies, including randomized trial, where they had two group of people, one with uh, who had adequate sleep, both in uh, amount of sleep uh, over eight hours and good quality of sleep versus those with poor quality of sleep in less than eight hours. And uh, there was a statistically significant difference between how uh, you know they responded to uh, a viral cough and cold and uh, you know duration of their illness. Uh, so sleep certainly has, it's been shown to have effect on the immune system. So I cannot emphasize enough um, the importance of sleep and try to maintain a good sleep hygiene, try to get good night's rest, uh, you know, and, and good deep sleep. And, uh, you know, insomnia is a very common problem in yeah. the United States and in other parts of the world. And there are some easy tricks people can do to fool their minds uh, you know, some of those would be avoiding caffeine uh, or highly caffeinated sodas and coffee uh, in the later half of the day, um, trying to do some light exercise during the during day, try to stay awake during day so that they're tired by the end of day yeah. and try to avoid uh, watching television, bed, bedroom and just kind of keeping bedroom dark and quiet and, and for sleep. So, Definitely. so very important to maintain sleep hygiene. Yeah. 